Good evening. We're now returning to open session. I have a number of reportable action items taken in closed session to announce. In regards to item 5A, the personnel summary was approved in closed session and a copy is available in the back of the room. In regards to item 5B, employee organization management, the board unanimously approved 1.5% compensation increase retroactive to July 1st, 2017, and a reduction of the 2018 19 uh, work year by three work days. Regarding item 5C1, the board approved the confidential settlement agreement number 2018060135 for $24,200. Regarding item 5C2, the board approved the confidential settlement agreement number 201803 for 12,000 per month through July 2019. With respect to item 5D, this is considered as part of the consent agenda. With regards to item 5E, the board met in closed session to discuss the discipline agreement for student number 17-18-06. Do I have a motion? I move that the discipline agreement between student number 17-18-06 and the Tamascal, Tam, I'm sorry, Tamil Pius Union High School District be approved and pursuant to ter the terms and conditions of the agreement established by the board during closed session, the agreement will go into effect immediately for a period of two semesters. I second it. Mary, this is a roll call vote. Mr. Sanderson? Aye. Ms. Owen? Aye. Mr. Ford? Aye. Mr. Spiderman? Abstain. And Ms. London Harlan Aye. In regards to item 5F, the board met in closed session to discuss the appeal of the denial of the interdistrict transfer for student A. A motion was made by Chuck Ford and seconded by Laura Anderson, and the board voted unanimously to uphold the denial of the interdistrict transfer. Now I'm moving on to ask for a motion to approve the agenda, including time limits, but I'm going to request a change in order. Um, it turns out that the CBO was called to um, an urgent matter, and I'm requesting that we get a motion to approve the agenda, including time li limits, but move the budget item, which is item C, for adopting the budget. Um, to the first item under trustee consideration. So she would present her report before goals and teaching. Do I have a motion? I have a, I have a question on this. I'm not sure if it's just the hearings. Do we need to approve the LCAP first or does it not matter? Um, I did not think so because of our last meeting, but I'll. I think it has to be the same meeting. Yeah, same okay. Meeting. Doesn't so we're good. matter which order. Okay. Yeah. Then I'll make that motion to approve the agenda, including time limits, with the exception that we will talk about item 16C first. Correct, under board considerations. Do I have a second, please? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, that passed. Uh, now we will, and I'm sorry, I just lost my, here we go. Thank you for that. Um, I'm going to ask for a public comment on the consent agenda. If there's no public comment, I'm also going to ask if there's any board members, um, or, or for that matter, members of the public that wish us to remove something from the consent agenda for discussion. Okay, in that case, I don't see anyone um, requesting that. So we don't have I, it, or you do? I do. I, um, the minutes 
17B. I just had okay, one so suggestion. Okay, so Ms. Anderson's asked for the minutes, item 17B as in boy. Okay. Can I ask for approval of, I am keep losing my um, place here, approval of the consent agenda minus 17B, which we'll consider later on in the evening. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, that's a roll call vote. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> now I found my place. Yes, thank you. Right. Um, Ms. Anderson? Aye. Ms. Owens? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Mary. Now we'll move on to trustee reports. And if, unless anyone has a specific order, I just thought we'd go from one end to the next, if that works. So start with you, Laura, please. Okay, I went to all of the graduations except for Tamascals, and it's always a highlight of the year. I think we had good board representation, so. Um, it's just one of my favorite things. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to report on is that um, I attended the Fiscal Advisory and LCAP Committee meeting on June 19th. Michael and I served in advisory, or uh, not, not advisory, observer roles. And in that meeting, we went over the minutes from our previous meeting. Um, the LCAP goals were reiterated. Tara did that. We reviewed the 1819 budget, which was covered at our last board meeting. Um, and we solicited feedback on the 1718 work, the work we did this previous year via survey. Tara sent out a survey to all committee me members asking for feedback. And then we spent the bulk of the meeting, which um, ended by 7.30, talking about splitting the LCAP fiscal advisory into two uh, committees next year. And um, the LCAP committee would be comprised of 28 individuals and would meet five times a year. The fiscal advisory group would be comprised of 19 people. Uh, that is an ad hoc committee. Um, and that committee would discuss non-bargained items uh, and would be responsible for coming up with a plan A and a plan B. Um, by November 2018, plan A, um, assuming parcel tax passes on the November 6th ballot and plan B that it does not. And then the superintendent, or in this case, interim superintendents would present to us at first interim in December, um, which one of those plans we're going with. Or not mm -hmm. we're going with, but what the recommendations are. Great. Anything else? Uh, I attended the San Andreas and Redwood graduations. Uh, I'm going to put in a special request for next year that we have a Polynesian dance again, please, Corey, see what you can do about that. Um, and I've, uh, the only thing I would add to uh, Laura's excellent summary of the LCAP Fiscal Advisory Committee meeting was that uh, uh, Tarina Mars from the uh, county office was there, and uh, her participation is, uh, um, is, is very productive in these meetings and we appreciate it. Uh, I also attended the graduations except Tamas Gals, which I regret that we missed. I hope we'll be able to do it next year, but to sit in the audience and see what the real work is about, uh, it's very moving. It's very important that we do that. And we thank our students for being the incredible talents that they are. And the staff that embraces them at each of these places where they leave with such hope. Anyway, thank you. I'll combine my trustee and president's report. I main thing to report is the same thing that you've, you've heard. And that um, I, I think in recent weeks, I've been especially uh, struck by the, just what a, uh, wonderful community we're in and that uh, people seem to come out of the woodwork to uh, provide their expertise to the community input and uh, seasoned parents. It's, it's been really, uh, graduation is, is such a nice time of year. You're reminded not only of the community but 
um, as you, well, you've all said, with uh, seeing these students graduate and all the good work. So it's a really nice shot in the arm. It's, it's been great. And I'll pass it to you, Chuck. And I'll pass you the microphone. Well, I too was at the graduations, except for Tamascal and Redwood. Um, all of them were wonderful, uh, just to you know see the kids um, and reflecting on you know the long you know the long journey of four years and you know how you know how they've grown up and matured. Um, yeah, wonderful. You know, wonderful. Best one of the best parts of being a trustee. Um, I can also mention that uh, a week ago, yesterday, I was at the uh, funeral for Francine Blum, um, the fabulous middle school teacher at Loganita School, um, famous, I think, for not giving Winona Judd the lead in Annie Get Your Gun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, it reminded me of the profound effect, reminded me once again, the profound effect that some teachers have on the lives of students. Um, and Francine had, you know, had a profound effect on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students you know, who ended up at Drake. Thank you. And we had no board communications to report now we will go to public comment for items not on the agenda. And I'm going to read a statement. The board recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and provides this time for board members, for members of the audience to address the board on any special related matter not on this agenda. The board can take no action at this time. Each speaker is requested to identify themselves prior to addressing the board and will be heard for up to three minutes. The presiding officer of the board shall determine based on time constraints of the board whether some time less than three minutes shall be allocated to individual speakers. And so I have three speaker cards. You're, you can you can go ahead. <laughs> um, so I do have three speaker cards. Uh, this is helpful for us to make sure we get the spelling of your name correct uh, for the meeting summary. Um, if you did not fill out one of these, that's okay too, but I'll just let you line up in any order that you uh, would like. And uh, please identify yourself before speaking and based on the number in the audience and the number of these, we'll have three minutes tonight. Thank two you. Two minutes. Okay, two minutes, two minutes. I take it back. Uh, David Coonhart from uh, Court of Madeira, parent uh, from Court of Madeira. Uh, our last just graduated successfully, so I didn't really need that knock. Um, I feel so grateful for the rapid action and complete action that you took and that Mary's staff did uh, in support of the resolution on climate uh, that I thought I should come back and thank you. Um, first, the bad news, two geophysical reports for May. One is that, you know, in uh, Mauna Loa, they have the global average measurement of CO2 in the, in the atmosphere. It was up to a record 411 parts per million in May. Related to that, in across the United States, May experienced the hottest May ever recorded in the United States in average surface temperatures. 5,600 local area high temperature records were broken in May in the United States from Southern California to Minnesota. That's the bad news. The good news is that I felt very proud when I was able to take your resolution along with 19 others from County of Marin, from County of Sonoma and others to uh, Congressman Huffman's office. They were gleeful in seeing that uh, students, faculty, leaders are active and concerned and, and uh, taking uh, further steps. Uh, also to Senator Kamala Harris's office, uh, who again, the staff was just delighted to see that there is this kind of intellectual leadership coming from their community. Uh, and they were pleased to see that. And 
since our goal was to have 12 schools uh, maybe pass resolutions by the time of the meeting that we were going to be in in early June, having 20 was, was really uh, fabulous. Now, the further good news, two months ago when I stood here, I said that there were 74 members of the Climate Solutions Caucus in the House of Representatives. And then I came back later and said there are 78. Well, guess what? During the week of the uh, Oceans Reports and the Citizens Climate Lobby being in town, six more members of Congress from Massachusetts, uh, Virginia, Kansas, Florida, and two from Kentucky, a Democrat and a Republican from Kentucky, all said they want to be a part of the House Climate Solutions Caucus. You won't see very much about this before the November elections, but you will start to see a group called the Americans for Carbon Dividends come forward with uh, advertising. And this is supported by people from across the political spectrum. Uh, and uh, in fact is quite led by some conservatives out there. So thank you once again for your uh, collaboration and support. It launched us very well. Thank you. Thank you. So I have three cards, uh, but I, thank you. Hello, my name is Mary Norton, and I'm here to speak to you on a matter regarding my son. I sent all the Board of Trustees a, an email last week, um, so you may be familiar, hopefully are familiar with what I want to speak to you tonight about. Um, my son's name is Jack Richardson. He's a student at Sir Francis Drake High. Last week, I was informed by Sir Francis Drake that a previously expelled student who assaulted my child on school campus at Sir Francis Drake will be accepted back to Sir Francis Drake next fall. I apologize if I'm speaking out of order of coming to the Board of Trustees isn't the right thing to do at this time, but I have spoken with Sir Francis Drake and they told me that the decision was made to bring this offending student back to Drake by the school board, and that um, Sir Francis Drake, v, uh, vice principal and principal, their hands are tied. I sent, um, this uh, beating took place um, May 2017 at Sir Francis Drake School. My son was beaten by a fellow Drake student who premeditated his attack. This happened during school hours, during class time. The incident was caught on video surveillance camera. The offending student was expelled from Sir Francis Drake and was sent to juvenile hall and was on home detention. Before the attack, I spoke with three members at Sir Francis Drake High School mentioning that I was concerned about um, the threatening behavior that was um, towards my son. Um, with this decision to bring the offending student back to Sir Francis Drake, I don't feel that my student can be kept safe there. Um, I am hoping that the, um, I'm adamantly opposed to this decision and I'm hoping that the board will reconsider this decision to send this, um, the offending student back to Drake. Uh, this, this offending student is placed at Redwood for this last year, um, is not being denied an education, and I, I um, cannot understand why this student um, needs to move schools. I'd like to know how Sir Francis Drake um, administration can keep my son safe, having, um, these two boys on campus again. So I'd like um, the board to consider changing this decision. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks for this opportunity to speak it's on the same topic as uh, you just heard. My name is Kent Julin. I reside at 25 Madrone Avenue in Woodacre. I'm a retired Marin County Fire Department uh, Battalion Chief, where I devoted my time to the service of our community, uh, just like you're doing tonight, in a, but in a different but important capacity. I've raised, I've raised uh, six children. 
that have attended various schools in your district, the last of which will be entering his junior year at Drake High School. My son was bullied by another specific student throughout his elementary, middle, and high schools. Because of this other student's stealthy ways, he tricked people. None of the physical attacks on my son could be documented. And in fact, when my son brought this information to the principal in Lagunita School, uh, they didn't believe him. And so he reached a point where he didn't say anything because he could see it would go nowhere. So there was no proof. I warned former um, Drake Assistant Principal Larry Pratt and campus security Rich Blaywitz that this other student had been bullying my son and that violence against my son was likely. A year ago, the other student, with the help of his network of friends and social media, stalked my son at school while he was working outside a classroom. The other student struck, um, he snuck up on my son where he used his fists to violently punch and his foot to brutally kick my son in the head. Watch the video again. I can barely talk. I was called to Drake that day where I was greeted by police, officers, paramedics, and school administrators. Uh, he was, my, my son Jack was dazed and confused. Uh, I took him to the hospital. He was treated for a severe concussion. Bruises and lacerations. He's not able to sleep in his own bedroom at night. He's too afraid. So we have a civil har harassment restraining order that's good until 2020. That's to keep that child 300 feet away from my son and my family. And any time I see that boy, I will call the police and inform and show them this restraining order, have that child arrested again. It's happened. So this is where I ask you to do the right thing. Keep this violent student away from Drake so that my son can finish his four years at Drake and you can attend his graduation ceremony there. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much for coming to speak to us. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other public comment on items not on the agenda? Oh, thank you. I appreciate you filling that out. Thank you. I think, uh, particularly for me, as the daughter of a World War II survivor, and as someone who lived in New York with a lot of neighbors who had tattoos on their arms, I think many of us felt sickened over the last week watching children ripped from their parents at the border as they sought entry for asylum in our United States. How many of us wondered, did we get to this point? But many other of us have been saying we have been getting to this point for some time. We're at about year 40 of a drug war where we have routinely stripped babies and children from their black parents and put them in prison um, for offenses that would never be prosecuted in the white community. So that is how we got here. We normalized it by doing it over and over and over again for decades to black Americans, our black neighbors here. And in Marin County, it, this was no less true. And I saw it growing up happening in Marin City. And I saw the lack of prosecution for white people in uh, the rest of the county, and it was pretty shocking. Um, this is a county where we were recently judged 54 out of 57 counties for racial equity. So we do, we do our thing here with particular finesse. 
I know that the school district has, after five decades of racially integrated open swims for children in the summer, recently managed to resegregate its public high school swimming pool, although, as the district has assured me, it's not racial discrimination, merely economic. Um, this is accomplished by charging $295 a week for a four-day, half-day summer swim camp while allowing a racially and economically discriminatory private youth swim team, the Strawberry Seals, to monopolize our public pool during the weekends. So in Marin County, where virtually every board is all white and all the county supervisors are white, we really, 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 really hate Trump, but in practice, we are really, really, really very much like him. Last month, in response to my comments, the board announced that it no longer provides any open swims, but on the same evening, even their own staff member, Chris McCune, pointed out that this is untrue. Every week of the year, Tam High provides 10 affordable open swims for a largely white adult, uh, adult crowd, that is five weekday morning lap swims, four weekday evening lap swims, and one Saturday lap swim. But there is no longer any affordable open access for children. This is particularly glaring as the Tam High pool remains the only outdoor pool within walking distance from Marin City children. The district has also responded that there are quote unquote scholarships to both the swim team and the $295 a week summer swim camp. But as everyone outside of Marin County understands, there is no earthly justification for forcing minority children to compete for a very limited number of scholarships to their own public swimming pool in summer. I want to emphasize, and I will beg for a little more time, that outside of Marin County, nobody is sympathetic to the position that children should have to gain a scholarship to cover access to a pool that we the people paid for. Bear in mind that in Petaluma... Thank you. Thank you. I'm really sorry to interrupt, but it's, it's been over three minutes, and we're only doing three minutes I, tonight. But I, I do appreciate I really what do you're appreciate saying. that. If I could just point out that in Petaluma, they're doing open swim mm -hmm. that is racially integrated. It's $3 per child. Mm -hmm. We're doing $73.75 per child. And I'd also Thank like to you. point out that in New York City, the pools all summer are free for children and adults. Thank you very much. I really, I'm going to have to ask you to stop because And we New York have, City also has free public swimming. Thank you. We have free somebody public. that has to report to the board and has to go to an urgent Terrific. meeting. So, But it's open okay. over three well, minutes. Well, I'm happy to stay and finish my comments later. Thank you. We're going to be closing public comment now, but thank okay. you. So our next agenda item is the adoption of the 2000 and 1819 budget and we have Terry Ryland and I know Terry you have to to leave do you are you can you do a oh, yeah. okay I'm not even planning on doing a presentation um, right nothing okay. changed um, okay from the public hearing mm -hmm. and so based on the information that was presented at the public hearing and the documents that were presented at both board meetings we're just asking that the board approve the budget for 1819 so do we have any sort of discussion by the board? Any follow-up questions for Terry Ryland since our last meeting? And then I'll open it up to public comment on the, on the budget. I don't see anybody, but do you, One Laura? question, the um, one-time funds from the governor, which I think we got in writing did, since our last board meeting. Right. We haven't, Didn't, he right. Hasn't I mean, as soon as the governor signs the budget, but we will bring that back in August in a budget okay. revision and clean up anything else that has, has changed. You know, I was any thinking he signed that budget, but I no, not yet. I think so. I haven't seen that he did, but. Just very eager to get that one-time funding in, in that eighteen nineteen right. budget. Right, right. It will get there. Okay. Before, yeah, before school starts. So I just want to be clear, there's no changes between this budget that's being presented and the budget that was being presented at the public hearing. Correct. I wasn't even on site last week. <laughs> so okay. Take this and, and move it to the next agenda. Absolutely. Okay. So I want to open it up for public comment in that case on the budget before we take a motion. Any public comment on the budget for 2018-19? Okay, seeing none, can I have a motion to approve to approve the budget for 2018-19, please? Do we have a second? A second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you for your So thank you, Terry. Good luck. Drive safe. I know you've got to go. I'm glad we're able to move it. So now we'll we'll go back to the original order and we'll ask Dr. Topier to report on goals in teaching and learning and equity and access and student wellness. It's a long, it's a mouthful, isn't it? Much to say. Um, 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, so for the update, um, a few quick things to share. That over uh, last week, we had some different professional developments occurring in the district. Um, specifically, our physics and the universe teachers, so those teachers that will be rolling out the first Next Generation Science Standards course, mm -hmm. um, had a full week of PD that was offered by Paula Berry, our lead instructional coach, along with the Physics in the Universe design team. So they were able, um, and thank you very much to Bev Alvarez and Paula, who managed to get all of our ordering for supplies for that course done in time so that our teachers could walk through all of the labs themselves before they teach them. And, and um, we have some great videos that they were, look like they were having some fun. So um, the preliminary reports and feedback from the teachers were very positive. I ran into one teacher who was breathing much more easily and felt really strong and felt good about the rollout. So that was great. That was, and kudos to Kim Stifler and the Paula and the whole um, NGSS task force for getting that done. Um, we also, with along with MCOE, we hosted their workshop of Beyond Diversity 2. We had about 45 people here in Krebs last um, Tuesday and Wednesday, and Beyond Diversity 2 was the follow-up workshop to Beyond Diversity 1. Um, so took the work um, a little more deeply. We were joined by members of the Reed Union School District, um, Ross Valley, and yeah. And Dan Rafael. Yeah. So um, it was a it was a really uh, insightful and and uh, productive two days. So that was that was great. And we also had our last teacher leader meeting for this era on Monday, where we did a lot of planning for next year. Um, other than that, we uh, we have 15 teachers and four administrators participating in the avid avid. Summer Institute in Sacramento this week, um, and that is funded through our College Readiness Grant. So we're still working on those funds. So hmm. very excited to have that team up there and expanding AVID. And then we, again, our August PD week is being well received. We have more than 50 people at this point signed up for the various, there's about 21 workshops being offered. So that's my update. Thank you. I'll just open it up if anyone wants to have a comment or question. I have a comment, question. Sure. Um, the last TL meeting, the TL of this era, I think you said. I did. <laughs> uh, given that we're suspending it mm -hmm. next year, can you share what the general tenor was in the room? You said there was planning for next year. Mm -hmm. We know there's not going to be a teacher leader program. I, if you could just share a little bit more about how people yeah. are feeling about the direction the district is taking. You know, I think um, this is my lens. <laughs> um, I, you know, I did sense a lot of gratitude in the room for the work that had been done, the work that people had engaged in. I think everyone's well aware of some of the financial restraints on the district. Um, there's there's a lot of sadness because there's a lot of people who were very invested in the work that they were doing. Um, but overall, it was a very positive, um, sort of grateful vibe in in the room. Um, you know, and I think they've, you know, we have a lot of task force moving forward next year, um, and I think everyone's also a little bit um, curious <laughs> to see how this work continues without mm -hmm. teacher leaders. Um, you know, we did emphasize that there's still, you know, there's formal teacher leader, and there's also informal teacher leaders. So a lot of these people and a lot of our other teachers will continue in leadership roles that just are not formalized. So I think we're, we're looking for ways to continue to support teacher leadership development in informal ways as well. Thank you. I, I, wanna, I wanna mention to you, I heard from, uh, one of the PTA officers at Tam High happened to see her at a function earlier in the week, and you know the the parents have been so concerned yeah. of what, yeah. what you know all the what what are, what are these impacts, and she commented that the principal at Tam High met with PTA leadership, and went to a meeting and reassured everyone that even with the teacher leader program, you know being put on hold for a while that he was confident that um, 
basically what you just said and, and definitely spoke the praises of the district office and that he was ready to go. And the thing that I was so happy to see was that our leadership is pulling together and making this work and then reassuring our parents and being honest about it and mm -hmm. forthcoming. And that goes a long way. So I appreciate that your team is, is doing that and being leaders with this whole situation. Oh, and that, thank you. that's a lot because of what you do. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tara, two things. First, yeah. I just want to make sure, did you get the uh, email from Lisa Kemp that was from April with respect to teacher leaders? I did. It was kind of a thoughtful email? Mm -hmm. Okay. I did. Um, second, with respect to physics in the universe and the NGSS rollout, Yeah. Um, what are the plans for evaluating how well the program is progressing and how Mm -hmm. you know, how, you know, the quality of instruction yeah. for students and so forth. Um, so the, the, uh, the task, so essentially we are going to have two task force within the science task force. We're going to have, so the physics and the universe task force will stay intact. They will meet, their charge will change next year and that is exactly what they're going to be charged to do and that is to meet less frequently but periodically to gather feedback from the teachers who are teaching it and evaluate how the program is working in reality. You know, it's one thing to build something, you know, once you implement it. So um, the task force will be working again with Kim from my office and meeting, I think, once a grading period to really look at implementation to hear feedback from our teachers not only on how is it to implement these lessons in these labs, how are students doing on the assessments? Okay. Yeah. And the other would be? The other, the other group the is going to be, yeah, building the, um, so we have a, a biology, the Living Earth, um, yeah, the Living Earth team. So we have a Living Earth design team re ready to go for next year. And they will also have a similar structure where they will have a, a biology NGSS task force that will provide them feedback throughout the process of, of writing that course and that curriculum. Great. Thank you. Sure. Do we have, assuming that some of it needs to get redone. Yeah. Um, I mean, my experience is no, that. No, perfect. We're Mozart. Yeah, we do that, it out the first time. That some new lesson plans look fabulous on paper and then mm -hmm. they just sure. bomb. Um, so what's our, you know, what's the process for retooling some of the things we have? You know, is there right. money? Is there time in the summer? Um, mm. Yeah, yeah. How's it? Yes, we are. I, I'm assuming yeah. it's a little bit broken. How's it going to get fixed? Um, so part of the the fix will be, um, we are going to do during our professional development days. They are going to be site based because we're losing three this year. The ones that we have are going to be site based, but we will be doing some pullout of the physics and the universe team. Um, so that includes people who are teaching it, the design team, just for those purposes, like what what's working, what needs to be adjusted. Because the other thing is, you know, we have, you know, something like 16, 12 or 16 teachers implementing it. We only had three writing it. So mm -hmm. you have far more people now with their hands on it. So giving them an opportunity to come together and say, well, instead of this, I did that and it worked really well. And and, and looking at, at those those pieces um, and continuing to supplement in that way. Okay, so there will be opportunities for all of those teachers to be together in the same room yeah. going over this stuff bit by bit. Yeah, okay. at least two over the year and then most likely again next summer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, just a, a couple of, one to get that many people signed up and it's not in the end of June right. for work in mm -hmm. August. I mean, it's not even the middle of August. They're going to be coming back before the middle of August, knowing that they're only going to get paid, what, for one session only, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. So, and, and frequently it looks like people will be signing up for multiple yeah. opportunities. I just mm -hmm. think that it's one of those metrics, as we use that word so loosely, that doesn't necessarily show up, but that reads a great deal to me. And that, that involves everyone involved in Thank supporting you, yeah staff 
through our organizations as well as your own professional leadership. How will principals be involved in supporting this work? Because teachers are going to be making, you know, they're going to be out there risking. Mm -hmm. So how are teachers going to help in terms of uh, evaluating staff or their teachers? Uh, are you speaking generally or to the physics in the universe? Uh, to the phys well, to the NGSS. Um, well, I think part, you know, some of that will come with um, working with Kim around, you know, they've been, they've gotten the information that you have through the presentations through the physics in the universe, mm -hmm. you know, and they've been working with their own teams at their sites deciding who's going to teach it and working with their teachers to decide who's going to teach it. So I think part of it will be that, that piece of, of um, working with Kim looking at, you know, making sure we understand all the elements that go into it, you know, the, the sort of cross-cutting concepts and the engineering practices. And, and so we've been keeping, you know, we've been sharing in principal meetings all along that information that Kim's been sharing with you too, so that they have a clear understanding of what it is. And that, that you could also, I assume, with the uh, social studies standards, similar procedure yeah, process. Yeah, it will be, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I mean, think you need to stay up there, don't you? Yeah. Yes. So we're on to the LCAP. So uh, much like Terry, I, I don't have, I have not made, uh, well, let me repeat this. There were slight changes made to the LCAP that is attached here, and those were omissions that were in the very last piece, which was the um, supplemental services. In that very last box, I had just, in the first LCAP, I had failed to put what percentage increase those services were. That was added into this document. That is the only change to the document. Any questions, Barbara? Um, given the items that are on consent agenda, which is this, the student achievement, oh, SIP says, yeah. the mm -hmm. SPSAs, mm -hmm. How much of the language is, is uh, just the same? I mean, are we duplicating our efforts over and over again? Uh, we're not duplicating efforts. I would say there's overlap. overlap. And really, yeah. um, you know, because the LCAP is a district plan, yes. SIPSAs are site plans, and they really should be reflections of the LCAP at the site level. So okay. what are we doing at the site level to implement that? So, you know, you're a little closer to the ground, so some of those action steps are going to be a little more specific and tailored to that site. But there, there needs to be alignment. alignment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. SIPSA. Sorry, single, single plan for plan student plan achievement. For, I knew the answer, I'm just trying to <laughs> stay away from it. JK, activity. Michael. <laughs> I'm trying to read body language. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I mean, we talked about it all two weeks yeah. ago, no changes. Okay. I think no we have four changes. great goals and good actions, and it's going to be tough uh, yeah. to implement everything, but we know that already, so we've got a good team in place. Any public comment on the LCAP item? Are we good? I think we need to approve the LCAP. I move to approve the 1819 LCAP. Do we have a second? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank, you. Thank you very much. And so the next item we already took care of, which was the budget, and now we'll move on um, to discuss and take action on a revised school calendar. And Tara, you sat down too soon. Yeah. Um, so, uh, per the uh, agreement reached between um, mm -hmm. Pamela Pius Federation of Teachers and the district, we have adjusted the calendars for the next two years to reflect those changes. Um, and Mary, if you could scroll the calendar just a little bit, just so I can show you that um, where the impact is, is here. The mm -hmm. So over the... Um, the major change is that we will be in recess for the entire week of Thanksgiving. Um,
the three professional development days that have been reduced took place in uh, September, October, and March. Or actually, that's not true. October and March. And then the third day, we are just, is the uh, 19th, and that will just be a non work day. That is uh, one of the Jewish holidays. Because we already didn't, teachers did not work on the Wednesday, so now they won't work. The two days are made up on the Monday and Tuesday of Thanksgiving week. So those are the major changes to the calendar. I, I'm, I'm guessing that some of the, the particular change at Thanksgiving week may alleviate um, some of the vacations that some of our students do feel yeah. that they can take. It, it, <laughs> hopefully it will improve attendance on the 16th. Um, and it does bring us into alignment with most of our feeders, most of our feeder districts that our basic aid districts are off that entire week, and that is for attendance reasons. So that should benefit our employees, those who have children in yeah. districts. And that families don't. who have children mm -hmm. in, in different grading grades. Any other questions or comments from board members? Any public comment on the revised calendar? So, but this didn't, notwithstanding the fact that we're taking more days off, this did not extend the school year at all? It does not, did? no, it did not change the start or the end days because we pulled them from uh, November and, and September. So that September 19th would have been a professional development day. Okay. And then October 8th would have been a professional development day. And March 11th would have been a professional development day. So those are the three days that will become non-work days. October 8th or October 3rd? So it was October 8th, I believe, was a professional development day. So that will become a regular student day. And the non-work day will be November 19th. March 11th will become a regular student day. And the non-work day will become November 20th. So it does not impact the beginning or the end of the school year. Okay. And what about instructional minutes? It doesn't change? It does not change because those were all non-PD days? Uh, student days. Okay. So, okay, I just need clarification in my head sure. Michael's line of questioning here. So, do, so parents and families will be notified that October 8th and March 11th and September 19th are now days that they're so March Children. 19th re, um, remains a non-student day. That was a non-student day. It remains a non-student day. It will now be a non-work day as well. September 19th. September 19th. Yeah. Okay. And October 8th and March 11th, mm -hmm. students will be here. In attendance. Right. Which is different from what they Correct. are believing up to it's this It's different point. from the previous calendar, yes. Okay. So we need to get this out. Mm -hmm. We will Pronto. get it out. Mm-hmm. We'll get a communication out to the, our community. So we need so, to approve pronto. <laughs> so October 8th was Columbus Day or Indigenous Peoples Day if you live in Berkeley? Yes. And what was the, and what was the March date? It was March 11th. It was just a longstanding um, professional development day. It wasn't a line necessarily that I'm aware of to any holiday. Okay. Yep. It's just a long month. Are we ready for a motion to approve the revised 1819 school calendar? And I think it's also the 1920, right? There's two right, calendars. there's just two items. Oh, oh it's separate item. item. It's yeah. a separate Sorry. item, so we'll Sorry. do it right in a row. Unless okay. you want to talk about it again when we get to that. Okay. <laughs> I'm waiting for a motion. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, please say aye. 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 And we'll go on to item E, which is the same thing, but for school year 1920, yeah. um, 2019 to 2020, I'll just say that. Uh, can I have a motion, please, to approve the proposed school calendar for the following school year? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, Tara. You can sit down now. You don't have to get up again. 
Okay, so next up we have the consideration and approval of agreement with Marin County Superintendent of Schools to provide interim district leadership effective July 1st, 2018. And I'd like to invite Dr. Walt Buster to the podium and Valerie, Dr. Valerie Pitts. Thank you. We're both really pleased to do this. Um, back, nice to be home again. I did this full time for a period of time, back when Barbara and I were both young employees in Chuck, right? We were a little younger in those days. This is a great opportunity for both Valerie and me. We're pleased to have this opportunity. Superintendent Burke has asked us to let you know how much she appreciates the work you're done doing, the work of the district, and how we can help. So uh, you have the contract for approval. It basically says that we're gonna be here 45 days and that's um, really not, not accurate. We're gonna be here as much as you need us, but uh, the, the education code only allows old people to make $45,000 a year. So uh, we're, doing this, uh, <laughs> we're doing this as a wonderful opportunity. Regardless of the funding, it's a great time for to be there. So you understand that I'll be here uh, starting July 1st, and so will Valerie, but there has been a change that she wants to tell you about in her work here. So I'll be putting a lot of days in up front to, you know, I'm starting today, tomorrow. Um, and as most of you are already aware, I have been accepted and received my final approval and offer to serve in the Peace Corps as a special response, volunteer with the Philippines for six months, um, to assist the universities there with their teacher training and administrative training programs and achieving higher levels of accreditation. So I'm honored um, to be able to serve in the Peace Corps and I'm as equally honored to be able to help you out from now until then. And they also have telephones and Skype in and the Philippines, yes, so we'll yes. be able to, uh, <laughs> to draw on that. Uh, both my children are Drake High School grads, uh, lived in the community for a long time, so we both bring a lot of passion to this. Mellick was one of the feeder districts to the high school, so she understands our work and also has high school experience. And I am a graduate of Redwood High School. That's right, you are. I understand you used to park in the neighborhood. There, I did. Right. <laughs> Careful what you say. <laughs> There are some differences about uh, permanent leadership and interim leadership. <laughs> Valerie and I have uh, worked together to put together a presentation that you have, and we've worked with uh, Lars and Tara to put this together, so we're starting for some clarity. But basically, our job is to get the district ready for the next permanent superintendent. Uh, we're uh, clearly transition leaders, so don't expect to see a lot of uh, dramatic new programs or things that go on, but we are going to make sure the trains went on time and that things uh, operate smoothly. And we're also going to work very hard to be responsive to the employees and the community to make sure the morale is at the highest level and that we move into the parcel tax with stability and, and good feelings by all of us. Um, there's some challenges with being a, a, an interim leader. We have to do the day-to-day -day work, the effective things that have to be done at the same time being very sensitive to the culture of the school district and making sure that people know our roles and there is great clarity. So we'll be asking you to give us a list of deliverables, of things that you want us to do. We'll work closely with uh, our colleagues in the district office and with the principals to make sure that there is a shopping list. Um, I love to go to Whole Foods without a shopping list. And I buy cool stuff. And I take it home and my wife says, what is all this stuff? So without a list, I don't do well. So Valerie and I will be developing a very clear list for you to, to work with. There are board policies that I've attached for you about the roles and responsibilities of the superintendent. And we're gonna ask you to be sure that you're very clear about those roles and responsibilities and that we're clear what lane we're in and what lane you're in. So important thing is the uh, communication with the assistant superintendents with uh, both of them have been involved in talking about this the last few weeks. We are gonna meet on Tuesday morning, already put together a long agenda of specific things that we're gonna work on. But we think clarity in the district office, clarity around the budget, clarity around all the things that happen 
are very important. It's also important, we think, that we're very active with the community. I don't know if you noticed tonight something new. When someone comes and talks to you, one of us will go talk to that person and make sure there's follow-up. So we promise to be responsive to the community, to making sure that there is clarity around communication. So what did I forget? I think you've covered it well. We work as a team and look forward to just keeping things moving and um, communicating all the good things that are happening in the district. And a thanks to your leadership team um, for keeping them running smoothly and well this past year. Tara and Lars and your directors, and I had an opportunity to meet with some of them at breakfast this morning, and um, they've done really great work. So we look forward to supporting and continuing that. So we will be talking to each other to make sure we're not stepping on each other's toes and giving mixed messages. So I think clarity is very important about that. And uh, Valerie and I will work completely as a team along with the assistant superintendents. And we understand that we report to five elected people. So we're going to make that work. Questions? Uh, comment? Sure. Comment. And I, and I speak directly to Wall simply because we remember a time when it seemed to me as an employee, as a teacher at the time, when you were leading us through a time that was very pivotal, uh, a lot of the programs that we now come to accept as normal, as traditional, started way back when. Yep. And, and it's a wonderful opportunity now, I think, to take a look at those programs and see how they are, uh, if they need refreshing, if how they've changed, how we can help make them more, uh, even, even better to serve our kids, because clearly efficiency is not it's not just about the money. What, what, I, so, what I took from being superintendent here for yeah. five years and moving to a very large school yeah. district was the importance of employee morale, the team building, yes. making sure that we were all, we talked about our and not the, so it's not the union, it's our union, yeah. it's not the teachers, it's our teachers. The more we can develop that kind of inclusive thinking and really mean it and walk the talk. I mean, you can't be duplicitous. If you once you say these things, you have to follow up. But I learned a lot being your superintendent a long time ago, and it carried well for me over the generations. And we did start some good, very good things here. How we keep those going. When I was here, we had, what, 2,000 kids, and we were trying to figure out if we'd close a high school. Remember those days, Chuck? Yes. Yes. That's a lot different now. So now we're growing. So how do we keep those same programs in a budget that's very limited and make sure that the people who live here, like both of us, make sure the kids in the future have all those services? And that means looking at the budget and looking at services, and it's going to take a team effort. I just want to add one more thing. The, the language that you have brought to the discussion already is so much more helpful in that you both inform every word that you use. And that, that I think has already helped develop us professionally because we get to grow too. This is a learning curve still for me straight up. And for us as well. So I'm I told I'm you guys when you got elected, encouraged. don't mess it up. Remember I told you? <laughs> yes, I do remember. Yes, I do remember. Yes, I do. So we need to come back and make sure that we, we do that with a sense of humor, but also yes. it's serious work. You know, we have we have students that uh, really need to, uh, I talked to Tara, I think, about we need to continue the equity work. You know, uh, I still don't feel good about what happened decades ago, and Thank we you. haven't gotten any better in those areas. I agree. And so those are things we need to work on. I have a question. Um, as we see the baton pass from Dr. Yoshihara to you two, and we're so grateful that you are helping us, um, is the, I just want to make sure the baton is not dropped and we're disqualified from the race. Um, so, will you be in contact with Dr. Yoshihara and you know make sure? I know that we have our assistant superintendents here. Um, I'm just looking for I smooth. Out to him by I just talked to David this afternoon for a few minutes, and we'll continue to do that. We both have good relations with him, and that's important. Mm -hmm. But also, we have 
great confidence in your two assistant superintendents. Yes, we do. Yeah. I worked with Tara last time I was here. And Sorry, Will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. And, and Lars and I have had a good relationship. So I think that building with what David started and continue those good mm -hmm. things yeah. and continue to enrich those is very, very important. Great. In terms of protocol, right, uh, do you want, if we have questions that we would normally, uh, or feedback, provide feedback to the superintendent, we'd like us to send emails to both like, of you? Yeah, I'd like to do that, and we'd both like to have individual times with you too, you know, a, a morning coffee like we had previously, or, but I think, you know, that there's not going to be a, it'll be seamless between us, so whatever is, go to one board member, we'll go to both of us. And we're really pledged to equal communication among all five of you so that there's uh, clarity on board operations and relationship. Yes, but the more communication, the better. Unfortunately, it is the Brown Act, not the Brown Suggestions. Mm -hmm. uh, I always wished it was. But following the Brown Act, we do want, I want, I'm sure Valerie does, a lot of direct communication. Of and we'll, we'll talk so that you don't have both of us answering you if, if you email. We'll be, we may set up a protocol for that. And that's the kind of thing we're still trying to figure out how to work. That's yeah. where our first meeting is. Maybe a trip to the Philippines for our coffees with... Uh, Parking. <laughs> Parking. Parking. Yeah, that's right. We said we're going to open a branch in the parking lot in the Philippines. Mm. <laughs> Thanks. I look forward thank to you. it. Thank you. No, thank you. Very, very fortunate to have you. Thank so you. Always. Yes, it's going to be uploaded. I think so. I think we need public comment. Public comment. Don't worry, I got it this time. <laughs> um, watch me now. Um, do we have any public comments on uh, the contract? Laura always reminds me about public comment, and I'm so happy that I remembered every time this time. So. <laughs> I always get the eye from the two former presidents at the end of the table. Um, so any further discussion by board members before we entertain a motion to approve the contract with the Marin County Superintendent of Schools? So I'm just going to say one thing, which is that I think I'm the only person on this board to have worked as a board member with both of these individuals as superintendent. and. Uh, you know, when I was serving on the Larkspur board with Valerie, uh, uh, who I had some responsibility for hiring originally, uh, and with Walt when you stepped in during our last transition. And, uh, you know, in these roles, we are very, very fortunate to, mm -hmm. have, to have these mm -hmm. two. Absolutely. So I would move that, has it been moved yet? No, you're going to do so that So I would now. move that the board approve the agreement with the Marin County Superintendent of Schools for interim leadership beginning in Jul uh, July 1, 2018. I second it. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's great. So we, the next item is we did pull an item from the consent calendar, consent agenda, I should say, and it was item 17B that Laura Anderson uh, I, pulled. I did pull um, page four under the discussion about the budget. In the minutes, I've got to find the spot. Um, it was... It's the second to last sentence in the first paragraph under item C on page four. The sentence now reads, an additional parcel tax will help the district dot, dot, dot. It's not, I think it should be changed to a larger parcel tax. Um, we still will only have one parcel tax. So strike an additional and I suggest a larger 
instead. Thank you, Laura. Mm -hmm. So would you like to make a motion yes. pending that or with that additional change? I move to approve the minutes from the June 12th, 2018 Board of Trustees meeting with the change as noted. Do we have a second? Uh, All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Meeting adjourned and at 7.30, everybody. Aye. Take a note.